So welcome back to the aerodynamics class. Today we will be discussing about the pressure coefficient and then the Laplace equation which is really uh, basic for all our fundamental uh, I mean, elementary flows in the next stage. Right? So we will be discussing that today. Now, um, okay. Uh, I acknowledge John D. Anderson's fundamentals of aerodynamics. Right? Now, let us start with the pressure coefficient. So far, you know about pressure, right? Pressure, we mention uh, pressure as we mention pressure uh, in terms of SI unit Newton per meter square, right? And it is a, a dimensional quantity. Right. It is a dimension. It is a dimensional quantity. Now we have one uh, problem. Say you have an airplane. Say your airplane is like this, right? And have a wing and have a tail and vertical stabilizer, horizontal stabilizer, whatever it is. And the airplane travels with the free stream velocity V infinity. Now, say if you consider the length of the airplane, the length of the airplane may be of, say, 20 meter. And if you consider the wing, the wing length itself may be of 4 meter or 5 meter. I am just taking an example. Now, I, as a researcher or as an aerodynamist, I want to study the characteristics of this airfoil because the airfoil is a main lifting surface. I mean, the wing is a main lifting surface in the airplane and the airfoil is a cross section of all those wings. Hence, I want to study this in the wind tunnel, right? So what I do is I create one uh, wind tunnel with the test section and the you know the diverging section and I will have some kind of um, shape like this and I have a honeycomb here and uh, I have a big fan here we have one in the aerodynamics lab I will show that once you come back to the university so when this fan rotates there is a friction pressure created and the flow will be like this. So there will be a flow over airfoil and we measure the pressure and we measure the pressure on the surface of the airfoil. Now the question comes, if the pressure measured in the airfoil is same as the pressure on the airplane Big question, right? Somebody has an answer. The pressure on the surface of the airfoil, which you are measuring in the wind tunnel, is the same pressure in the airplane? Danisha? No, sir. No, the pressure may not be same, but we can say that the pressure coefficient may be same, right? So that is why the pressure P at the wind tunnel may be not the same as P at the airplane wing, but one can say that the non-dimensional coefficient Cp at the wind tunnel will be equated to the Cp which is measured at the airplane. That is the beauty of the non-dimensional number. So here what we will do is we will non-dimensionalize this pressure. Right? So let us non-dimensionalize this pressure coefficient. So, 
let us non dimensionalize the pressure right it has lot of application in aerodynamics right so usually what we do we you already know the bernoulli's equation that is p infinity plus of rho infinity v infinity square that is equal to t that is total pressure this is the static pressure and the dynamic pressure we define the pressure coefficient right coefficient that is cp is equal to p minus p infinity by of rho infinity v infinity square this is actually the pressure coefficient which is a dimensionless most often we write the q infinity as of rho infinity v infinity square which is called as dynamic pressure right so now we have non dimensionalized pressure right so in most of the aerodynamic uh, calculations or in the literature or in the research paper it is very common to find the pressures which is expressed in terms of the coefficient of pressure right um there is there will be like you know there is no such information on pressure but coefficient of pressure is always there right and uh, coefficient of pressure is a kind of similarity parameter right so now we will consider the incompressible flow let us consider the incompressible flow let us consider the incompressible flow right so if we consider the incompressible flow cp can be represented in terms of velocity so let us assume uh, let us consider a flow over an aerodynamic body which is immersed in a free stream right say let us say the air body say aerodynamic body and uh, you have a free stream velocity so we can say that the free stream velocity v infinity and the free stream pressure p infinity right so let us take any one arbitrary point somewhere because the flow will be like this right so let us consider any one point and the pressure p and the velocity v can be considered so based on bernoulli's equation we can write p infinity plus of rho infinity v infinity square can be equated to p plus of rho v square now we can write this as p minus p infinity that is equal to of rho into v infinity square minus v square right so we can write this right now we can write cp we already know cp right here cp is equal to p minus p infinity by of rho infinity v infinity square so i write cp is equal to p minus uh, p infinity by of rho infinity p infinity square okay so that is equal to of rho so rho is rho infinity v infinity square minus v square divided by divided by of rho infinity v infinity square 
Since I am considering the incompressible flow, rho is rho infinity only. So of rho infinity, that is equal to one minus v by v infinity square. So for an incompressible flow, Cp can be written as one minus v by v infinity square. So there was one problem we have considered in the last class, right? So this is the coefficient of pressure that is for the incompressible flow. So this is a really an useful expression and we can use this uh, uh, expression in many of our discussions in later stage, right? So please note it. Right. Now, now let us consider the um, next discussion, right? Okay, Laplace equation. Anyway, we will start with. Um, we will start with the condition on velocity for incompressible flow, right? We can start with the condition on velocity for incompressible flow. Okay. Right. So, what is the physical definition for incompressible flow? The physical definition for incompressible flow is that the rho is equal to constant. Right. Rho is density, density is constant. What is rho? Rho is mass per unit volume. Correct? Mass per unit volume. Unit volume. Then rho is constant and rho is mass per unit volume. Then a fluid element of fixed mass, if it is moving through an incompressible flow field, must have a fixed volume, right? So we already know that the uh, del dot V, del dot V is basically the time rate of change of volume of a moving fluid, right? Time rate of, time rate of change of time rate of change of moving fluid, moving fluid element, moving fluid element per unit volume, right? So for an incompressible flow, we can state that the volume of the fluid element is also constant. Right? So there is no change in volume and hence we can consider del dot V is equal to zero. Right? What is del dot V is equal to zero? The time rate of change of moving fluid element per unit volume is equated to zero. Right? Okay. Now let us go back to the continuity equation. We know the continuity equation. 
what is that the continuity equation do rho by do t plus del dot rho b is equal to zero right for incompressible flow we know that rho is equal to constant and hence we can write do rho by do t is equal to zero right and this del dot rho v can be written as can be written as rho into del dot v right so we can write this equation as zero plus rho into del dot v that is equal to zero or we can say that del dot v is equal to zero right so del dot v is equal to zero is a condition for the velocity for the incompressible flow right so with this point we can move to the governing equation for irrotational incompressible flow this is for incompressible flow please note whenever i say it is incompressible flow you should remember the del dot v is equal to zero right del dot v is equal to zero so now we start with the laplace equation here right and we want to study incompressible and irrotational flow so here please note this v right this v can be written as ui vj and wk and since the um d del v by dt is equal to 0 is it means that the volume with respect to time doesn't change and finally we get this equation and from the continuity equation we have prove that here for incompressible and irrotational flow this is for incompressible flow and this is for irrotational flow we will start writing the point del dot v is equal to 0 right so the fact is that the divergence of the velocity is zero for incompressible flow right now in addition for an irrotational flow the velocity potential can be expressed right say for example the velocity potential can be expressed for incompressible irrotational flow right for irrotational flow we can express for a rotational flow we can express v is equal to del phi right what is del phi v is equal to del phi then we can write this equation as del dot del phi is equal to 0 that is del square phi is equal to 0 what is del square phi del square phi is actually do square phi by do x square plus do square phi by do y square plus 
डॉ स्क्वायर फाइव बाई डो इज एक्स स्क्वायर इज इक्वल टू जीरो सो दिस डेल स्क्वायर फाइव इज इक्वल टू जीरो इज दी लैपलास इक्वेशन Now, in later stage, if I say for any derivation, if I say let us consider the Laplace equation, then you also should imagine that the Laplace equation satisfies for incompressible and irrotational flow, right? Or in the other way, the irrotational flow and the incompressible flow can be described by the Laplace equation. And for Laplace equation, there are numerous solutions available. now let us say um okay we will write the laplace equation in terms of cartesian coordinate system cartesian cartesian coordinate system we have already written right cartesian coordinate system so what is that if we can represent phi is equal to phi of x comma y comma z then del square Phi can be written as dou square phi by dou x square plus dou square phi by dou y square plus dou square phi by dou z square is equal to zero. Right? What about cylindrical coordinate system? If it is cylindrical coordinate system, then the phi is equal to phi of R comma theta comma z, and hence we can write del square phi is equal to one by R into dou by dou R into R dou phi by dou x. I recommend you to note every equation plus one by R square into dou square phi by dou theta square. Plus dou square phi by dou z square equal to zero. Similarly, you can write for spherical coordinate system also. I leave it to you. So in the spherical coordinate system, you will be using phi is equal to phi of r comma theta comma phi. We try to express in All the coordinate system because we will be using that in the later stage or in studying uh, in the aerodynamics, right? Now let us consider a two-dimensional flow, right? Two-dimensional incompressible flow. Let us write the two-dimensional incompressible flow. Incompressible flow. so if it is two dimensional flow we need to consider only x and y right so let us write for the two dimensional incompressible flow i want to have the u velocity and the v velocity in terms of steam function in terms of steam function psi somebody can say what is the steam function u i mean in terms of steam function in terms of steam function how can we say u sir do psi by do y okay so u is equal to do psi by do y And v is equal to minus dou psi by dou x. And we already know with uh, the del dot v is equal to zero. So what is del dot v? Dou u by dou x plus dou v by dou x dou y equal to zero. Since I consider only the two-dimensional case, plus dou w by dou z equal to zero. If we consider three-dimensional, 
right now we have u and v let us substitute u and v here and then write the equation do by do x of do psi by do y plus do by do y of b minus do psi by do x that is equal to do square psi by do x do y minus do square psi by do y do x both are same and hence this is equal to zero because we know mathematically this and this are same right do y by do x do square psi by do y do, y, do x and do square psi by do x do y is equal and hence we can write this equate we can equate this to zero right so psi automatically satisfies the continuity equation and uh, this is the uh, definition for the use of psi that it is a conservation of mass and so on right so um, so we can uh, we can note that right del dot v is equal to zero then the next point we are thinking about irrotational flow right say for the irrotational case for the irrotational case how about the equation do b by do x minus do u by do y is equal to zero this is our equation right so what is v and what is u we know already v and u so let us write the equation do by do x of what is v minus do psi by do x minus do psi by do x minus do by do y of what is u do psi by do y do psi by do y is equal to zero right what it means do square psi by do x square plus do square psi by do y square is equal to zero what is this equation it's a laplace equation therefore the steam function also satisfies the laplace equation right so please remember here we have uh, done the calculation starting from the condition on velocity for incompressible flow we found that del dot v equal to zero but then incompressible and irrotational flow we found that the laplace equation and then we consider the 2d incompressible flow uh, and we represented in terms of a steam function psi and uh, we have written del dot v equal to zero and we understand that it is satisfying and now for a rotational case we have do square psi by do x square plus do square psi by do y square equal to zero that is del square psi is equal to zero right now uh, we will have a discussion right on uh, say the conclusion we can say right what is the conclusion the conclusion number one any irrotational incompressible flow has velocity potential and steam function right 
that both satisfy the Laplace equation for any rotational rotational incompressible incompressible flow as the velocity potential and the steam function right as velocity potential and steam function phi it satisfies the laplace equation second one any solution of laplace equation right any solution of laplace equation any solution of laplace equation represents the velocity potential or steam function for irrotational and incompressible flow for irrotational and incompressible flow this is very useful information because we will be using that in many cases many cases we can formulate the uh, fluid flow mathematically and finding a solution may be difficult or in other way we may have the uh, solution we need to find which uh, satisfies which equation so this case is very simple irrotational and incompressible flow has a velocity potential and a steam function both satisfies the laplace equation and conversely we can say that any solution of laplace equation represents the velocity potential or steam function for irrotational and incompressible flow right so um, so we with this information uh, we stop at this point right and uh, we can say one more information when there is a flow around a circular cylinder or flow around a air foil we can say that on the surface the steam function is equal to constant and that is the information which can define the solid body right so we will have a detailed discussion on that uh, later and uh, we will start with our uniform flow which is elementary flow in the next class right okay right so we already know that the velocity and the pressure are the primary dependent variables for the incompressible flow our ultimate goal is to find that using the velocity potential or steam function whatever it is and we have the um equations to find that say for example u is equal to do psi by do y and v is equal to minus do psi by do x if we know psi similarly if we know the pressure at one point velocity um pressure and velocity at one point can be calculated right using the bernoulli's equation t plus half rho v square equal to p infinity plus half rho v infinity square right so with this points um i stop right so in the today's class we started with the non dimensionalizing the pressure coefficient that is one result cp is equal to p minus p infinity by of rho infinity v infinity square and then we uh, made it with cp is equal to 1 minus v by v infinity square for the incompressible flow since the density is constant right so then we try to define um the condition on velocity right 
and then condition of velocity we can, we know that the divergence of velocity is equal to zero and uh, then considering the incompressible and the rotational flow we know the condition for a rotational flow where v is equal to del phi substituting that we finally got del square phi is equal to zero and to satisfy the laplace equation then uh, writing that in all the forms partition cylindrical and spherical coordinate system then um, in in uh, this case we want to represent the u and v in terms of steam function and we have represented that and it also proves that del dot v equal to zero for a 2d case then we want to introduce the rotational case so the equation of dou v by dou x minus dou u by dou y is equal to zero that leads to the laplace equation again and finally we made a conclusion that the rotational and incompressible flow which is represented by the steam function and potential function can be represented by the laplace equation or any solution which is suitable for the laplace equation can represent the rotational and incompressible flow that's all for today thank you very much